السلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکاته الله اکبر الله اکبر الله اکبر الله اکبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله. Verily all praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whoever Allah leads astray, none can guide. And I testify that no one has the right to be worshipped except for Allah alone. And I testify that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is his servant and final messenger. Ya ayu alladhina amnu taqullah haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except in a state of submission. Islam. يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul, Adam and from that soul he created his wife and from them he made countless men and women. Fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut off the tie of kinship. Verily Allah is a watcher over you. Ya ayuhal ladhina mutaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfil lakum dhunubakum wa man yuti allaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema O you who believe fear Allah and always speak the truth. So that he may rectify your actions and forgive you for your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger will, it, will attain the highest achievement. He'll be saved from the fire and entering the paradise. Amma abad, fa inna al-khayr al-hadithi kitabu Allah, wa khayr al-hadi hadi Muhammad, wa ishaar al-muri muhtathatuha, wa kullu muhtathatin bid'a, wa kullu bid'atin dalala, wa kullu dalalatin finna. To proceed. The best speech is the book of Allah, the Qur'an. And the best guidance is the guidance of his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And the most evil of matters are those that are newly invented. For every newly invented matter in the religion is an innovation. Every innovation in the religion is misguidance. And every misguidance is in the hellfire. Many of us perhaps are participating or know of someone 
who took exams in school or college or university, etc. Or perhaps an exam like driving or related to work or, or profession. The importance of passing this exam could advance the studies or the work or your quality of life. And maybe you exert yourselves in hiring tutors, spending a lot of time revising and money. And some of them, you might have noticed, they have received their results being pleased and others filled with regret. I would like to, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to turn your, our attention to an exam which will, all of us, we cannot ex uh, escape it. An exam that there are no retakes, no helper, and you cannot cheat your way out of it. And whoever is successful in this test, everything else that follows will be easy for that servant of Allah and whoever fails, everything after that will become worse. Ani, the freed slave of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh, said, when Uthman ibn Affan stood by the grave, he would weep until his beard become wet. It was said to him, when it is mentioned to you about paradise and hellfire, you do not weep. When the ayat are mentioned, you do not weep. But why is it when you come to the grave, you start to weep? He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الْقَبْرَ أَوَّلُ مَنْزِلْ مِنْ مَنَازِلْ مِنْ مَنَازِلْ آخِرَةً فَإِنَّ جَا مِنْهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَيْسَرُ مِنْهُ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْجُ مِنْهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَشَدُ مِنْهُ The grave is the first of the stages of the hereafter. Whoever is saved from it, whatever comes afterwards will be easier for him. But if he is not saved from it, whatever comes afterwards will be worse for him. And the Prophet said, I have never seen any scene, but the grave is more frightening than it. Who is Uthman radiallahu anhu? The narrator of the hadith, he is from one of the Khulafa Rashidin, the one who the Prophet gave him the guarantee of paradise while he was alive. For him to be concerned about the grave, for us is something to reflect upon. That these real men, what caused them to shed tears? And his far thinking, his strategic thinking, knowing that if he is saved from this fitna, if he is saved from this trial, then he will be from the successful as mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Bara ibn Azib radiallahu anhu said, we went out with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, accompanying the funeral of a man from the Ansar. When we reached his grave, it was not yet dug. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat down, and we also sat down around him. We were still as if birds were over our heads. He had in his hand a stick, which, which he scratched the ground. He then raised his head and said, Ista'idhu billah min adhab al-qabr. Which means seek refuge with Allah from the, from the punishment of the grave. He said it twice and thrice. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When the believing slave is about to depart this world and enter the hereafter, there come down to him from heaven angels with white faces like the sun. And they sit around him as far as the eye can see. They bring with them shrouds from paradise and perfumes from paradise. Then the angels of death come and sit by his head and says, O oh good soul, come forth to forgiveness from Allah and his pleasure. Then it comes out easily like a drop of water from the mouth of a water skin. When he seizes it, they do not leave it in his hand for an instant before they, before they take their soul, put it in the shroud with the perfume. And there comes from it a fragrance like the finest musk on the earth. Then they ascend and they do not pass by any group of angels, but they say, what is this good soul? And they say, he is Fulan, he is so and so, and they name him by all the good names that the people call him on the earth. until they reach the lowest heaven 
They ask for it to be open to them and it is open and the soul is welcome and accompanied accompany to the next heaven by those who are closest to Allah until they reach the seven heavens. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, record the book of my slave in Iliyun, in Iliyun in the seventh heaven and return him to the earth for, the, for from it I created them, to it I will return them and from it will begin bring them from once again. So his soul is returned to his body. Then two angels will come to him. They will sit him up and ask, Mar Rabbuk, who is your Lord? He will say, Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah. Then they will ask him, Ma deenuk, what's your deen? What's your religion? He will say, Deen al Islam, my religion is Islam. They will ask, Ma hadha rajul? Who was that man who was sent among you? He would reply, Who are Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He was the messenger of Allah. They will ask, And how did you know? He will answer, kitab Allah, He said, I read the book of Allah and I believed in it and I affirmed its truthness. Then a voice calls out from the heavens, and says, my slave has spoken the truth. So prepare for him a bed from paradise and clothe him from paradise and open from him a gate of paradise. Then there comes to him some of its fragrance and his grave is made wide. And as far as he can see, then there comes to him a man with a handsome face and handsome clothes and a good fragrance. And he says, give, I give you glad tidings. And joy this day, he says, who are you? I don't know you. Your face is a face which brings good, good news. He says, I am your good deeds. He says, he makes dua to Allah. He says, my Rabb, oh Lord, hasten the hour so that I may return to my family and my wealth. And the narration carries on regarding an individual who is not a good person, a fasik, a manafik, or a disbeliever. And he goes through a more harsher trial. For when the angels come to him to take his soul, that soul is not ready. And the angels, they rip out his soul. And a foul smell comes from this soul and they say, what a hideous smell. And they call him by all the, the bad names that people would call him. His name will be written down in the Kitab Sijin for the wicked doers. And his, when his body is returned to his, when his soul is returned to his body, he will also be asked. And when he is asked regarding, who is your Lord? He will reply, uh, I'm not sure. The people said Allah. So I will say Allah. And when he is asked, what is your deen? What is your religion? He will say, uh, he will fumble. He will not say clearly. He say, the people said, Islam, I will say Islam. And when he is asked about who is the one that sent to you, he will say, he will stutter, he will not have a clear answer. And he will say, the people said Muhammad, so I will say Muhammad. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. From this hadith, the scholars of Islam, they have mentioned that this hadith contains the principles of the deen, the foundations which every Muslim should have this knowledge. And many of the ulama, they have written books regarding this hadith to show its importance regarding these three questions. As for the first question, the answer. Just because we know the answer doesn't mean that we will get the answer right. As the individual said, I think it's Allah because of what he heard from the people. Because he did not truly make in his life Allah his Rabb. The obligatory knowledge the Muslim must have is the knowledge of Allah, which is Tawheed, worshipping Him alone. 
in regards to his lordship, knowing that Allah, he's the only Rabb. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's the one who's a provider. He's the one who benefits and harm. And automatically worshipping him alone. Through singing out Allah in subhanahu wa ta'ala in regards to his ulihliya. And also in his names and his attributes. Islam, as regards to the statement, Islam is my religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Inna deena inda Allah islam Indeed, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَيْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ If anyone desires a religion other than Islam, never will it be accepted from him. And in the hereafter, he will be in the ranks of those who have lost. So the deen of Allah is Islam. So the Muslim, he should know what is obligatory upon him. He should seek that knowledge which is accumbent upon him, that he needs to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is this man? A person will be asked about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because to accept Allah as your Rabb and to follow Islam as your deen, a person is expected to follow the only qualified teacher and the role model, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No other person, idea or system could serve as a substitute and a guide to the accomplishment of the first two considerations. The noble scholar Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi, he mentioned, we ask Allah for safety because it is feared for many people that they are not truly acquainted with the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They do not know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came with proof and guidance and, and they do not know the meaning of the testimony, la ilaha illallah, that no one has the right to be worshipped except for Allah. They found others saying it, so they just repeat it. A believer must be aware and careful and ponder over the book of Allah and prepare himself to answer that the Prophet is the messenger of Allah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to us with the clear proofs and the guidance. So we believed in him and followed him. Meaning that this belief of ours is built upon knowledge of the guidance and clear proofs that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. So with this he succeeds in the severe test. And a, and a final note in regards to some of the, some of the actions we can do to, pr to protect ourselves from this uh, punishment of the grave, from these tests and trials. Of course, number one, I mentioned those three things to learn about them. And I would encourage myself and you guys, if you could, to find this book on these three fundamental principles of Islam. Also, there's a narration from the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Harir radiallahu anhu said, that the Prophet ﷺ used to make this dua. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the punishment in the grave and the punishment of the fire and the afflictions of life and death and the evil affliction of the false messiah, the Dajjal. And he used to tell the people, he commanded them to say this in your prayer, in the final tashahud, at the end to make this dua. This is the one, this is the dua that has been legislated in the Sharia. We set ourselves targets and we try more of self, motivate ourselves perhaps by uh, having a picture of our goals and to remind ourselves. So one of the things the Prophet ﷺ, he used to forbid the Muslims to do was to visit the graves. But he, he said in the later part of his life, go visit them for they are a reminder of the hereafter. Visualizing our destination perhaps will help us to stay focused and understand its importance. Our time on the earth is, is few, is little compared to our time that we will spend in the grave. I remind myself and respected Muslims to prepare yourselves for the trials of the grave, just like you would prepare for an important test in the worldly life. This is no way to discourage seeking knowledge to benefit yourselves in the worldly life, which is important but are reminded not to neglect our religion, which is to do with our ultimate success. I ask Allah to grant us success in this life and the next and to save us from the fire. Allahumma gfil lana wa rahamna wa atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kinada ban nar. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Wa akimu salah.
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Start or ask. As we're waiting for the line to be straightened, please everyone look to your left and your right. If you find any space, close the gaps and if you could squeeze kindly to the left to make more space for our brothers outside. Straightening the lines from the completion of, uh, from the prayer and please do not leave a gap for the shaitan and turn your phones to silent. Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألهاكم التكافر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله 